Turkey and Northern Iraq, first Gulf War, and then Dash 8s, and then AWACS for Bosnia and Kosovo War, and 330 Airbuses with Can 3000, and now 737 with WestJet. So we've been flying for 37 years. Did you get the group? And did everything, okay? So, real quickly, there's all the emergency lights that can come on. Uh, the airplane's worth about, uh, this one's a 600 series, so it's the smallest one we have. It's worth about 50 million. The next size up, 55 million. The other ones are about 65 million a piece. Uh, we have audio warning systems. There's a computer that warns us. We'll give it five seconds. I think that's good. Flight slow. Pull up. Terrain. Mountains. Wind shear. Wind shear. Wind shear. Wind shear. Alerts. Wind shear. Wind changes. Terrain. Terrain. Terrain from Pull mountains. Up. And then the test pattern will show the different heights Obstacle. of the mountains. Pull up. So that's that. Airspeed, low. It warns about flaps, it warns about everything. And it's completely computerized, but we're not here for what we do on a daily basis. We're here for when the stuff doesn't work properly, and then we have to do it manually, and when things go wrong. We have our radios down here. We have our flying stuff up here. I'm going to fly this late. Obviously, sky, ground, at our altitude, both sea level, our speed. Our radar altimeter is there. This is uh, how, where we're going to go. We just loaded the route. So, if I look at it, a bigger mode here. So the blue are airports. So we're taking off Ottawa, we're going by Lake Simcoe, and we're going down into Toronto. And you can feel it, see us Timmins, Thunder Bay, you can see down uh, Chicago. And if I take it out of the, that mode, so you just seen the train in front of us, and it goes down to Bangor, Maine, Boston, and there's JFK, New York, and all that stuff. So that's what we use to navigate with. The big part of the system though is these computers. That's where we've loaded our route into. Our route looks, uh, there's our, where we leave, where we're going to, the flight number in the runway, and this is the route we're flying. It's pretty simple. We're flying that magenta line. And from here I can get all kinds of data, like uh, I can see my position in latitude and longitude. I can see how my navigation is working on you know, for uh, IRS systems and GPS. So I can get all that kind of stuff. So this is the big computer. This is our autopilot. That's how we fly it when we're obviously uh, doing things. Uh, we hand fly it for the takeoff and landing most times, but then we go to autopilot for allows us to spend more of our time watching the systems, handling the radio, and all that stuff, so it's safer. Um, if you're hand flying, you're concentrating a lot more. Up here, this is our fuel pumps, this is our electrical generator system, and right now we're on the auxiliary power unit, so the little jet engine in the tail, I just took it off ground power, we're now on internal power. And over here we have our hydraulic system, and over here is our pressurization system. So all these things match with that, and basically that's that. You know, the good news is that if anything happens to you two, you can always get uh, uh, you two guys, of us coming yeah. here. It, you'd like to say it's easy. It, it, we use a lot of satellite-based navigation now. We do approaches in mountains, no longer using ground-based stuff. We do three-dimensional pictures going down valleys and turning in and finding the runway. So uh, it's quite critical stuff. In fact, when we came in here earlier, this was the approach we flew. RNAV runway 32. And we can come in, instead of going big long final, we turned final at about six miles and came in. So that's a looking down from God's point of view and the side point of view. So that's how we do a lap. Fire test is here. There's our fire of our two engines and the very power unit. Cargo fire test. So all that stuff we have. And he's looking to disconnect the ground power. So he's disconnecting the ground power now on the hand signal. And that's about it, guys. Any quick questions? I know you a lot. So if I'd known you were up there, we could have done this a lot sooner, so I apologize. Any questions quick? How fast does it go? <laughs> um, we go about Mach 0.78. Uh, it can go up to about 8.0. It's not real fast, but we go high, up to 41,000 feet. Uh, indicated airspeed, it could go up to probably about 500 or so. We, we can do 500 in the climb. Or, okay. It's a good performer. You can climb out at 20, 25 degrees nose up with uh, not many people on board. We'll probably have some. And today we'll do reduced power takeoff to save gas and save money. We'll only use about probably. 80% power to take off. Sorry to interrupt for a second. Yeah. They just disconnected the APU, so if you want to fire up the, uh, the air, I'll well, get the APU fired up. Oh, yeah. There we go. Thanks. Okay, any questions, guys? I know it's pretty quick. Maybe we can talk to you on the ground again in Toronto quick, okay? Cool. But hang in there with Air Cadets. It's great. It's a fantastic organization. Cool. Take courses, get things you can from them, scholarships, all that stuff. It sets you up for life. I mean, look where I am and all that, you know? Seriously, because Air Cadets. Okay. So you got your wings in the air, Got the air cadets, flying scholarship in the 74. Was the uh, uniform the same or was it no, different? Oh no, we were in those old wool blues. Wool. Wool blues. 
itchy. Ouch. <laughs> you wouldn't believe it. <laughs> Back in the 60s and 70s, yeah. Did you get your part, uh, private only? or you... Private license from the Air Cadets. Okay. And then I went in the military. I had a night endorsement and was starting to work on some stuff civilian-wise. And then I got accepted in the military. And then after the military, it was a matter of just taking a weekend course, writing some civilian exams, and then I was qualified to do this. That's a Because you're pretty qualified in the military. Yeah. <laughs> this is pretty easy in comparison. When you're flying F-16s on ground attack missions into Iraq, air-to-air -air threats, air refueling, and yeah, this is easy. 